This book didn't change my life, but it does change many people's lives. This is probably the most famous calculus book ever written. It's called Calculus. This is the third edition, and it was written by a man named Michael Spivak. He has an interesting Wikipedia page. I'll try to leave a link in the description so you can read it after this video. And in this video, we're going to take a, a quick look at this book. So this is a book I purchased after taking Calculus 3, but before really learning to write proofs. And that's a key point. So you can buy this book if you know some calculus, and you'll be able to learn calculus with it. But there are some proofs in here, and so just try not to get hung up on those like I did. You can push forward and still learn a lot of the material without being a proof master. Here are the copyrights, 67, 80, and 94 by Michael Spivak. And there's his publishing company, Publish or Perish, right? Publish or Perish. I guess that's a statement, right? If you don't publish, you will perish. And here is the preface. Uh, the preface is by Francis Bacon. I hold every man a debtor to his profession, from which as men, of course, do seek to receive countenance and profit, so ought they of duty to endeavor themselves by way of amends, to be a help and ornament thereunto. Cool. And here it talks, uh, here's the preface. Let's, let's look at it. So this book, by the way, before we look at the preface, let me just say that this book is, is still used today. And if you are a person who is using this book, or if you know of this book, leave a comment. I'm really curious. I used to have this friend on IRC who was really good at math, and he is the person who introduced me to this book. Uh, many, many years ago. He said he actually used this book for a course at the University of Waterloo in Canada, which is a, a reputable school. I think it was an honors calculus course. And I'm pretty sure that's who this book is intended for, honors calculus students. So you're going to get a treatment in this book that you don't get in other books. You're going to get explanations in this book that you don't get in other books. And we'll read the preface in a minute, but let me just say this too. This book is expensive. So this, this I remember when I bought this, I bought my copy brand new. And I had to think about it for a while, but, but I'm glad I did. All right, let's, let's read this. Every aspect of this book was influenced by the desire to present calculus not merely as a prelude to, but as the first real encounter with mathematics. Since the foundation of analysis provided the arena in which modern modes of mathematical thinking developed, calculus ought to be the place in which to expect, rather than avoid, the strengthening of insight with logic. Yeah. And then here's a look at the content so you can see what it covers. Now, it doesn't cover a ton of topics, right? So you're not going to see you know, all the topics you find in a modern calculus book like the one by Stewart or Larson uh, or Briggs or, you know, Thomas. There's all kinds of books out there that are really good. Those books generally have more topics than this because this is an older book. This has hidden gems, though, and just things that you won't see, explanations that you won't see in other books. It's, it's Michael Spivak. Starts with basic properties of numbers. I remember really getting hung up on the first part, thinking, oh no, I'm not good enough for, those, for this book because there was some little proofs here. Again, if you don't know how to write proofs, you can just skip ahead. Foundations, functions, graphs, limits, continuous functions, three hard theorems, least upper bounds. Or you can learn to write proofs. I shouldn't just say like negate the proofs. Mathematics is about, in some sense, proof and discovery. Um, so yeah, you could study some proof writing, get a good proof writing book. Derivatives and integrals, derivatives, differentiation, significance of the derivative, inverse functions, integrals, the fundamental theorem of calculus. It's pretty cool. Let's come over here. Trig functions, pi is irrational, planetary motion, the logarithmic and exponential functions, integration in elementary terms. And then here we have infinite sequences and infinite series. This. This is what really, I guess, if anything, changed my life. This is what really made me like math, right? Infinite sequences and infinite series. Really cool. Yeah, I mean, this book definitely has influenced a lot of people, so it is a life-changing book, in my opinion. Um, there, there's the, this book has like a cult following. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. I love these little quotes. Yes, yes, yes. To be conscious that you are ignorant is a great step to knowledge. Absolutely. So it starts with basic properties of numbers. You know, it just goes through and you see it has like the basic things, right? It has like these little proofs. And I had a really hard time with this because I just didn't have any um, 
you know, knowledge, it was such a struggle. Now it's easy, it's like obvious, but when you don't know, it, it's, it's really hard. So one of, this, one of the things this book is famous for, besides like the excellent explanations, is something even more interesting. It's the ridiculous number of exercises and how hard they are. Let me find the section where, here we go, derivatives. Let's come over here. So here's, here's, here's number one. <laughs> so prove, look, it's a proof, right? What, what the heck? So this is a calculus book, right? It's Calc 1. This is your first real introduction with, well, mathematics, as Mr. Spivak would say. Prove, working directly from the definition, that if f of x equals 1 over x, then the derivative is, okay, well, that, that's pretty easy. I, I think a Calc 1 student can handle that. And then prove that the tangent line to the graph of f does not intersect the graph of f, except that, okay, you could do that. Mm -hmm. It's kind of fun. I kind of feel like we should work this out, but I don't know if I have a pencil nearby. Yeah, so these, these are actually pretty good. These aren't too hard. And then, you know, they do get harder. And there's some with the stars. These are really hard, the starred problems. And so as far as answers, by the way, you say, does this book have answers? Yes, it does, but, but, but it's better than that. Let me show you this. This is really, really cool. This is really cool. And, you know, it's, it's Michael Spivak. You know, he did this, you know, one man, right? Just, wow. Wow, just it's a lot of work to write a book. I, I think that math people, like people who write these books, I don't think they get, I just, I don't know if they get the respect or the attention. I don't know what it, they just, people don't realize how hard it is. Like this is so much work. You know, I started to write a math book and I lost, I lost the files, but it was nothing like this. It was just like a small little workbook. Writing a book like this is, is just monumental, you know? It really, really is, it's impressive. See these answers? Look how crazy they look. Look at that, right? Those are answers to exercises, right? What is that, chapter 18? So you've got answers here, right? But there's some missing. However, Spivak has an answer book. So and I'll leave a link in the description. I actually have the answer book for this edition. I, I have to go find it, but I have it, I own it. But there's a newer edition now, it's a fourth edition, and it has a combined answer book. So third and fourth edition. That has the answers to the problems that are missing here, okay? So that basically you get full solutions to everything. Let's, let's look at this, chapter 18. See what's going on there. Mr. Spivak, Mr. Calculus. Spivak Calculus. Wow, 49 exercises, what a legend. What a legend, right? I just have so much respect for people who write math books, you know? It's, it's just really hard. I mean, as a, as a collector of math books, you know, it's obvious that, uh, that I do. <laughs> Look at this. Show that if, okay, if f satisfies this differential equation, suppose that f satisfies this. Prove that f equals zero as follows. Okay, so they have you go through a proof. So this is a very uh, easy uh, differential equation to solve. Okay, we could actually solve this. Um, actually, the, the answer to this, to this differential equation, I think I can do it. Uh, it's going to be... Mm, y equals c times uh, c1 e to the x plus c2 times e to the negative x. And you could do that. Let me just show you really quick. <clears throat> so you've got f double prime minus f equals zero. So to solve this, you could, by the way, we're, we're, we're violating Spivak. Spivak wants us to, to go through and basically kind of like you know, justify this a little bit better, I think. I didn't read the whole question. But the first thing you do is you write down what's called the characteristic equation. So in this case, there's a, there's a two here, a second derivative, so it's an m squared. F is just m, or one rather, because it's, it's the zeroth derivative, right? Second derivative, two, zeroth derivative, m to the zero equals one. So this is called the characteristic equation. This factors, you get two answers. This is a method for solving these types of differential equations. And so he doesn't teach this, but once you know other math, you can kind of like do some of these problems different ways. And then so the answer would be this. But then he's telling us uh, we, have, we have this condition here too, right? We have that uh, f of zero is zero and the derivative is zero, all right? So, so that means that if we do this, we get c1 plus c2 equals zero. And if we take the derivative, I know I didn't explain that, sorry, I was brushing through this, but use a chain rule here, right? And then apply, plug in the zero. 
two equations, two unknowns, you add them, right? You add them so you get 2C1 equals 0. So you get C1 equals 0. Plug in C1 equals 0, and here you get C2 equals 0. So C1 is 0, C2 is 0, so Y is equal to 0. But Y is F. I, I called it Y, uh, but it's really F. So F is 0. I mean, but you can do that computationally, but that's not what Spivak wants. So I, I don't know why I just rushed through that. I just kind of wanted to justify that for myself. Um, so yeah, it is correct. And then, so he wants us to do it a different way. Okay, kind of interesting, right? So, and this is a starred problem. So this is a harder problem. That's why I didn't try to like solve it his way right now in the video, because then I'd probably get stuck. Maybe, here's a harder one. Okay, that's what we just did. <laughs> so I just basically told you that it's that by solving some equation, right? He's, he's asking you to prove it, and you're supposed to do it using problem 43. Pretty cool, right? What's this one? Find all functions f satisfying. Okay, that's kind of cool too, right? Yeah, so you can really get lost uh, in, in some of these exercises and just reading them and thinking about them. I, I just did there. I was like, what's going on there, you know? And um, yeah, what's this here? 40. Prove that if f of x equals e to the negative 1 over x squared for x not equal to 0, then f of 0 equals 0 and f of 0 equals 0, then the kth derivative at 0 is 0 for all k. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Look at this one. Suppose that f satisfies f prime equals f, and then you have f of x plus y equals f of x times f of y for all x and y. Yeah, prove that f is the exponential function where f equals 0. When I saw this, I thought, oh, the exponential function satisfies that property. And then I kept reading. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. And 0 is another one that satisfies that property. So yeah, the question, the question does make sense. Cool. Fun. Fun, fun, fun. Fun mathematics, right? And the ex again, the exercises are amazing. You've got some computational ones, too. Don't think it's all, like, really hard proof stuff, right? I mean, let's, let's go here. Here we go. Here's, here's, where, here's where it gets crazy. Even number 1. Differentiate each of the following functions, right? Remember that a to the b to the c always denotes, yeah, that's really important. Yeah, that's, let me just zoom in here so you can see that. Yeah, remember that a to the b to the c is always, yeah, that, that's key. Wow, look at that. Look at that. e to the e to the e to the e to the x. <laughs> you got to find the derivative. That's what we were seeing earlier, right? These derivatives, I should work some of these out. Yeah. Cool, right? So this is Michael Spivak's calculus. I think that's that's good. Um, you see what to uh, what to expect in a book like this. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check it out if you want to. If you want to learn math, check out my courses. I've got calculus courses, differential equations courses, all kinds of courses, advanced calculus, abstract algebra. They're actually all on the Udemy platform, which is a reputable place to have courses. So you know you're using a a good course provider. But if you get my courses, please use my links. Uh, it helps me greatly, and I've lowered the price. Links are in the description of this video or from my website, freemathvids.com or mathsorcerer.com. Also, check out my other YouTube channel, The Internet Sorcerer. I post all kinds of random content there. And check out my other channel in Spanish, Math Sorcerer Español. It's just like this one, but it's in Spanish. I don't post as much there, but I do post sometimes. As always, keep doing mathematics.